Alhamdulillah, peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in to The Dean Show. Very interesting topic today. Aaron Hernandez, if you guys haven't heard about it, we're going to be talking about his life a little bit here. NFL football player was about to make $40 million. Now he's sitting in the jail. So how did he end up there? How did he, how did he end up there? My next guest, we're going to be talking about drugs. We're going to be talking about music. We're going to be talking about all the things out there that interest a lot of people. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with this very hot topic here on The Dean Show. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Back here on the Dean Show, Harun, how you doing, brother? Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. Walaikum assalam. How's it going? Alhamdulillah, good. How about yourself? Uh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. We're, 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 we're trying to really help people understand the purpose of life. And we see what happens to people when they don't live the purpose of life. Right. You know, they end up in some real bad predicaments. We have uh, Aaron Hernandez, who was on his way to be making a, a whole lot of money, $40 million. Could you, could you imagine that? Le went from being in the hood to the NFL, and now he's in a jail cell. Wow. So we, we, we want to try to analyze his life a little bit and see, like, what would lead someone, you know, he's still not convict uh, guilty, but, you know, a lot of times association, you know, with the wrong crowd can, can have you um, convicted. convicted, right? So uh, we, we want to, you know, a lot of people are, are uh, idolizing the, the uh, people such as himself and they look up to him and they think this whole, you know, thug lifestyle is something that's cool. And if we can help change someone's life for the better, a lot of the, you know, you see a, a gentleman like that, he wasn't a kid. Right. You know, but you see he's, he's still emulating, you know, a lot of the, the rappers and a lot of the word people get these crazy ideas and they end up going and, and maybe watching Goodfellas, Tony Montana, and then they try to, you know, uh, take it to the streets and you see what happens. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, a lot of times we believe that fame and money it buys us happiness, it buys us um, peace in our hearts, it buys us, you know, whatever it is we're looking for and it's absolutely a fabric, it's an absolute fabrication. When we are, if we are to analyze the reports, for example, that the guy, uh, you know, um, Hernandez had, um, what people said about him prior to the event, you know, prior to the, the few days before, you can see that even with all of his money, this guy was really, really looking for happiness, right? He was begging for happiness. You know, he had women, money, cars, everything that he could materially want but that happiness, that peace of heart, he still was searching for it. And proof and evidence of that is that he needed it every day. Now he's sitting in the jail cell without it. And he's probably talking about what he had, you know, just a few weeks ago. Right? So, um, and he misses that. Now, no one is safe and secure from going to jail, right? The best of the best of us have gone to jail, right? Prophets have been imprisoned. Um, they've, they, uh, uh, um, people have been accused of doing things. But the question is, which one of the two had the peace of heart, had the completion of life? So we're gonna take, for example, him, and we're going to look at the story of a very common person among the people of the book, Joseph, Yusuf, alayhi salam. One also, of the, one of, is the one of the prophets of God. He was one of the prophets of God. Yeah. Who was also accused, he was also convicted, and he, was, he also spent a lot of time in jail, and he was betrayed by his family, right? So um, before we start, I want to start with a statement that he says towards the end. 
and he says innahu man yattaqi wa yasbir fa inna Allah la yudhi'u ajran muhsinin indeed for those who fear god meaning stay away from the, that which god has forbidden and remain steadfast and patient god never forsakes the uh, rewarding of those who strive towards his perfection okay so now we're going to look at two similar situations Situ- situation number 1 2013 hernandez messes up and he ends up going to jail right when i were going to go back about 5000 years the story of yusuf alayhi salam may the peace and blessing be upon him is um falsely accused or we're going to go back even further he's betrayed by his brothers and he's thrown into a well and sold out to slavery falsely accused eventually goes to jail right while he's in jail what does he have is he talking about how many women he had had right how much money he had how much cars he had how much money he used to spend no he's talking about what he has because he's still content with what he has which was tawhid oneness of allah oneness of god pure monotheism right devotion to god So now we're going to move back up, you know, another 5000 years and we're going to come back to today's situation. Here he is, convicted. A grown man for the first time ever going to jail many times will cry. Will cry. You can imagine the different things that are going through his head. 40 million dollars. I just blew it. Mm-hmm. He's been in jail before. I'm just, he's been he's, he's been, been in jail yeah, before. Yeah, he, he's been had run-ins with the police before. Yes. But nothing this big. Nothing this big, yeah. So now he has his all of that money. You know, this is this is what's going through his head, all of that money. Uh, Cuz that's what he used yeah. to worship. Is that money, yeah? All of those women. That's what he used to worship. True, yeah. Right? All of those cars. That's what he used to worship. Mm-hmm. So guess what? All of that stuff that you just used to worship has left you. And why are you I, I'm trying to figure out if you're you have all this money and many people think okay I get the money, I get the women, I'm going to be happy, great career. I mean people just fantasize, you know, about mm-hmm. being in the NFL, you know, it's a major league baseball whatever the case, but he's on angel dust. You heard of this angel dust? Yes. What is angel dust? It's a horrible drug. I believe it's uh, it's a form of acid. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand which causes hallucinations and a whole bunch of other What the hell are you doing on angel <laughs> dust? Can I say that? Hell. <laughs> what are you doing on angel dust? If you got all this money, you know, uh, <clears throat> what you're smoking rolling up blunts, mm-hmm. you know? The guy that actually that he killed, that what they say he killed, the guy Lloyd, he was known for rolling his blunts up for him. Mm. Right? So why are you smoking angel dust, uh, blunts and alcohol and you're at strip clubs and you know and now you're committing a, you're allegedly committing a murder he was already killing himself yeah you're already killing He's yourself already killing so are, are you living the purpose of life the way it's intended for you to live by the creator if you're doing all these things mm. not at all not at all not at all and when we look at his situation we'll we'll find that whatever he used to worship other than god just like everything else that we can worship other than god mm-hmm. it leaves us yeah it leaves us and we're left with nothing else mm mm-hmm. but God in the yeah. end who we should have worshiped. Mm-hmm. And so when we look at Yusuf alayhi salam, Joseph. Yeah. When he went into prison, the story that's given to us is about two people um, who were people of of the prison. And um with this story, they ask them they ask him about some of the dreams that they had. And before he tells them the interpretation of dreams because he was very skilled in interpreting the dreams. The first thing he tells them instead of what he had, what does he tell them? He tells them about what he has. He says, "Inni taraktu millata qaumin la yu'minuna billahi wa hum bil akhirati hum kafirun." I left the people who don't believe in Allah. They don't believe in God. And they disbelieve in the next life. 
He's talking about what he has. وَاتَّبَعْتُ مِلَّةَ آبَائِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقِ مَا كَانَ لَنَا أَن نُشْرِكَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Right? And I follow the way of my forefathers, Ibrahim and Ismail, uh, Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac. Pure monotheism, once again. And we did not associate any partners with God. Right? So he, instead of him talking about, because the first thing you do when you go into jail is you talk about, some of the, to some of the guys, you talk about your lifestyle, you talk about what you used to have. You talk about the things that either you loved or you hated. Mm-hmm. Right? And here he is talking about both. Talking about people who didn't worship Allah, and he talked about the people who worshiped the one and only deserving of worship, God himself. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a break, hold off right there, and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. And it's simple to understand. I wouldn't know what the sky looked like, what the trees looked like. I would have never seen the faces of my beautiful children if I didn't have the ability to see. How blessed we are by Allah. And obedience is born out of gratitude. So thank Him, call upon Him, establish a relationship with Him, forget about the past. Take it out of being a ritual and make it a spiritual experience. Islam is not something dubious, unclear, hazy. It's really straightforward. He said it changed his life. He said he saw every single episode that you had ever recorded. Ever recorded. Back here on the Dean Show with Brother Harun, and Alhamdulillah, you're very young. I mean, you, you, you. It, it would be something that nowadays, you know, for someone to quote unquote be religious, to be talking about the Creator. It's something that people think like, maybe I'll get to do when I'm like 50, 60. But how did you come to this point in your life where you've actually dedicated your life to a better cause? I mean, all praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, whenever I, uh, when I was a young a kid, you know, my, my parents really instilled, they tried to instill the devotion of worshiping Allah, worshiping God, you know, and educating me on the importance of, of doing it. And... Um, you know, Imam Bukhari, uh, who is the narrator of the, of the or the, the writer of the most authentic narrations of the uh, Prophet, uh, he has a special chapter in his uh, book called, and it's the Book of Knowledge, and it says the, the first uh, sub-chapter of the Book of Knowledge is the, it says the chapter of knowledge before you speak and act, right? And so that shows the importance of knowing compared to not knowing. Mm-hmm. And also, um, when we look at the, the formulation of the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Iman, right? The pillars of Islam is, of course, to worship no one other than God, um, to pray, to fast, to pay your zakat or your, your annual um, charity that's obligatory and to make your pilgrimage, right? And then the second part is iman, right? Which is faith. And you can't have faith unless you know. You can have Islam with knowing just a little bit, but, but the, the more you know, the more you love. And if we look at the bringing up of someone, for example, Hernandez, who we were talking about earlier, we look at what he was taught as, as a child, mm-hmm. right? Who were his parents? And we're not going to say he had bad parents or anything like that, but what was your son doing? Did you know? You know? There's a lot of things, even as a lot of the Muslim families, we don't uh, devote a lot of time towards educating our kids the importance of the religion of Allah. Rather, we would force them to do this and force them to do that. Mm-hmm. And they grow up to become teenagers and they start to question and they don't know why they're praying. They don't mm-hmm. know why they're giving charity. They don't know why they're, co- the ladies don't know why they're covering up. They don't know why they need to be Muslim. It was because their parents made them do this and made them do that without properly educating them. Can someone use that as an excuse if they had parents who were on drugs, they came from a very corrupt background, can they use that as an excuse and say, look, you know, that's, I'm a product of my environment, and to continue on just following their desires. I mean, what would you say to someone like Aaron Hernandez, who says, you, don't, you haven't walked in my shoes, you mm-hmm. don't understand what I've been through? And just like, you know, someone like Hernandez, you know, I haven't walked in his shoes at all. But at the same time, he hasn't walked in mine, nor has he walked in yours, mm-hmm. right? 
And so God says in the Quran, وَلَا تَزِرُ وَازِرَةٌ وَزِرَ أُخْرَى No one is held accountable for what someone else is doing. So just because your parents were going through what they were going through, it doesn't mean that you're held accountable for what they did, nor will they be held, nor will they be held accountable for what you do. So you can't blame what you're doing on your parents. Mm-hmm. Once you know better, you need to change. Because there's people in two predicaments who have been in the same ghetto, but one went to prison, and one ended up in the White House, for instance. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, or if someone went to that, I mean, two people, I'm saying, they, they can end up in the White House, and it's going to end up in the penitentiary. Yeah. So, but they came from the same hood. Yes. Or the same environment, is that right? Yes. Yeah. And like God says in the Quran, in Allah, la yughayru ma biqawm hatta yughayru ma bi anfusim. God doesn't change what's within the people until they change what's, in the, what's mm-hmm. within themselves. Yeah. So, if you want better for yourself, if you want to move forward in your life, then what you need to do is change. How, how do you get someone to really contemplate more on this? Okay, you're because we're talking about a subject now. If we're talking about uh, baseball, football, entertainment, and really people get plugged in. But now when you start talking about this very important topic, purpose of life, and why we've been created, you know, where we're going when we die, judge, the, the day of judgment, and you're talking about God, worshiping the creator, not his creation. You know, a lot of people, they're just, they, they, so many people fall asleep to this mm-hmm. because when they look in there, you know, it doesn't fit with their DVD collection of Sylvester right. Stallone and John Clooney or their CD Lady Gaga 50 Cent. Right. I, God, I don't have him anywhere here. So when you start talking about prophets, you start talking about a lot of this is foreign to people. Mm. Why is it so important to talk about this, reflect about it? Why is it such an important topic to, to go away from that direction to this direction? What, what would you say to someone like Aaron Hernandez if you had his word on why is this so important? Because we need role models. We need good role models. People who you open up their closet and all you see is clean clothes, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, we don't need the role models whom you start to open up closet their their closet and you know there's a little vomit there. There's a little there's a dead person in the corner over there. There's a uh, 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 something that um, you know uh, you didn't want to see over there. And you know it's just a whole bunch of disgusting stuff in this closet, right? We need good role models, and there are no better role models than the prophets. No better role models than the prophets. So, um, you know, Hernandez, for example, Aaron Hernandez, he was a role model for the, for the NFL. He was a role model for the people who play football in terms of playing football. But if you came to look at his character, you probably wouldn't want to hang out with the guy, right? I'm not saying he was a bad guy. Maybe he was a nice guy, right? Maybe he had friends that you didn't want to hang out with. Right? Especially if you were trying to be clean. Let's say you were an alcoholic. You didn't want to be around the guy. Let's say you were addicted to drugs, trying to recover. You didn't want to be around the guy. You didn't want to be around him. You don't want to be around his friends or nothing. But you can always, always look towards the prophets and the people who were clean, righteous, purely monotheistic, and always say, that's someone who I'd like to be in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. Is, is it true? Because naturally, if you keep watching a particular movie star, a particular NFL player, you're going to start growing an attraction towards them. Yeah. I mean, not even physically, but I'm talking about just emotionally. Your heart will get attached. Yeah. And then you're going to want to mimic them. Isn't that right? And we've You seen, start mimicking them. Yeah. And we've seen people, like, for example, who died, who um, cried when Michael Jackson died, when Whitney Houston died. Um, uh, we, we've seen people who, who cried when a lot of the, the uh, uh, James Brown, when James Brown died, you know, um, people uh, cried because they, they loved these characters. They, and it wasn't the real person that they loved. And that's the amazing thing. It, it wasn't the real person that they loved. They loved the character that the person represented. They loved the voice. They loved the musical artistry. They loved um, the acting capabilities. But they didn't fall in love with the person themselves. Mm-hmm. And for example, if you were to look, I remember, um, if I recall correctly, Whitney Houston had, had a show with uh, Bobby Brown, right? And they were constantly fighting and arguing, yelling and, and screaming at each other. You know, what kind of lifestyle is that? Is that the kind of lifestyle you want? Right? Is that what you want your house to be like? 
Mm -hmm. These are all good questions that you need, that each and every one of us needs to, when we look at these uh, role models, we want to look at their character first and their ability second. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at their abilities first and their characters, yeah, their characteristics second. Mm -hmm. This way, when we grow up as young kids and uh, you know have wives of our own or, or husbands of, of our own and kids of our own houses of our own and businesses of our own uh, jobs of our own we can start emulating the proper uh, character of the righteous right and start uh, and use people who have good capabilities to learn what benefits us from their capabilities and ignore the character. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. So that's very important. And would you say that, you know, people, they should really reflect upon what happens when that moment of death comes? And is that like the, the end of it? That's when you have that, that last, I mean, that's it. You can't, your, your ability to make choice now is over, isn't that, is that right? Yeah. So now's the time to get it right? Death is inevitable. No one's going to say that, um, I mean, if anybody says they're going to live forever, they're either lying or crazy. Yeah. Right? So what's going to happen after you die? If you've gone to anywhere else and you haven't received the proper answers, the book of God, the Quran, has those answers for you. Has all the answers. All of them. Let, and it makes sense. Let's talk a little bit more about that when we come back here on the Dean Show. We'll be right back. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to the Deen Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Greetings of peace to everybody all around the globe that's tuning in to the Deen Show. This is the Deen Show. Back here on the Deen Show, Aaron Hernandez, topic of this show, NFL superstar, was about to make $40 million. Yeah. I mean, the majority of people don't, won't, won't see this in, in, in 10 lifetimes. Yeah. So he's in a jail cell now. So the question is, do we want to follow people such as his, himself? You know, actors, actresses who are putting on a great show for us. But you talked about better people to follow. The messengers that the creator sent to guide humanity. What, I mean, what, what was the message that they came with? They came with you know, every prophet, and it's described in the Quran, it's described in the, the, the Torah, it's just described uh, in the Bible. Right? Every messenger came with the same message, to worship the one and only creator, nothing else, and to obey the commandments that the messenger has come with. From the creator. From the creator. From the maker of mankind. Yeah. What does that mean when you say worship? People think, okay, now I got to get up with my job, go in the room, you know, and, and just lock myself up. And wor What are you talking about when you say worship? Bring it home with that. You see, God says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَلُونَ I have only created man and jinn to worship me, meaning worshiping God, right? And what does worshiping God entail? Um, the basics, of course, you know, to make your five prayers a day or to supplicate him to worship God, uh, the one and only God. But let's see, hmm. you worship God, right? You need to eat, right? How many of us can live without eating, right? In order to worship God, we need to maintain this beautiful body that God has given us, right? So you need to take care of it. You need to maintain it. What do you need to do that? You need a job, right? So that means and there's a basic jurisprudence rule, right, among the, the, the people of jurisprudence, right? مَا لَا يَتِمُّ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ Anything that, is, that you need in order to accomplish what is necessary, meaning um, like prayer, then that is also necessary, right? So anything that you need in order to accomplish what is mandatory is also mandatory. So therefore... You go into work, work, uh, work in order to be able to take care of your body, in order to be able to take care of your family, in order to be able to eat, in order to be able to drink, in order to be able to think, in order to be able to um, uh, call mankind. All of this working becomes a form of worship, right? You, being ed you going to school, becoming educated, this can be a form of worship. 
right? You smiling to your neighbors, having good relationships with your neighbors, having, uh, being good to your children, being good to your uh, family members, all of this becomes a form of worship because you cannot possibly um, have an easy time worshiping God when you have problems everywhere, right? So therefore, you keeping good relationships with your family and not causing problems and doing things to prevent problems becomes a form of worship. So, in a nutshell, anything that we do that is good, that coincides with the commandments of God, is a form of worship if we have the proper intentions for it. Proper intentions and doing it for the pleasure of the Creator, everything that He loves? Yes. Can, we, can that be constituted as a form worship. of servitude, worship? Yes. So you mentioned being good to your neighbor, rather, rather he be a, a not yet Muslim or a Muslim, is that right. true? Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, saving, saving a human being, let's say, you know, from, from you know, destroying himself, helping someone get off drugs, or helping someone to become a better human being, that's an act of worship. Yeah. Being kind oh, to yeah. your parents. Definitely. What else can we list as act of worship? Mm -hmm. Alongside with the five uh, pillars of praying five times a day, fasting, all of these things that help us to be more God conscious. What else? The list goes on. Being good, in, good being good to your community, being, being good to your neighbor. How, how, how about uh, avoiding bad things? If avoiding you, problems. Can, can, yeah. that, can that, like, say, avoiding adultery, gambling, where you might have the the um, the tendency that you want to do it, but you avoid it, yes. and you did it for the Creator. Is that an act of worship? All of that's a form of worship. Yeah. All of that's a form of worship. As a matter of fact, um, there's a there's a beautiful story. I don't think we have enough time to go through it, but this one guy was uh, was on the verge of committing fornication and mm -hmm. he withdrew and God rewarded him tremendously because he withdrew and he didn't commit, go through with the fornication for the sake of God. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you have for someone like Aaron Hernandez who's sitting in a jail cell right now and if this gets to him or you know maybe uh, he's able to get some first class treatment and he's watching the Dean show yeah. or one of his friends watching, what, what, they can get him the message, what would you tell him? Look for peace. Look for peace in the Creator. Just like Joseph, even though he was in prison, he told people what he had. He told people what God has given him. And that was the peace in worshiping the one and only Creator. Rather than looking for the things that won't last. You buy a car today, next year it'll be old. You get a pretty girl today, three years she'll be old, right? Is that how long it takes for them? A lot, right. a lot, a lot slower than that, right? <laughs> <laughs> everything um, gets, everything just fades out. Yeah, yeah it gets tiring. You get bored with it. Yeah. Maybe she's still pretty, or he's still, you know. But you get, it gets tired. Yeah, yeah. But when we worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the Creator, yeah, right? He's forever, mm -hmm. and He'll be there forever. Yeah, He'll always be there, and just like Joseph said. At the end of that story, right? Those, yeah, indeed, those who are uh, God fearing and they persevere in their patience, then God will never, ever forsake the rewards of those who strive towards His perfection. Strive towards goodness. Yes. Strive towards the Creator. Uh, before we go, good company, please, in one minute, because it was also said that he went from his bad company of friends, he went up scale uptown, met some new bad friends, and brought his old bad friends to meet his new bad friends, and you see what happens when you have bad friends. Yeah. You're doing bad drugs, yeah. and you're uh, going to bad parties, and you're just living a bad life, and you see what ends up at the end. Yeah. So for, uh, for people now who aren't in jail, and they really, you know, most people want to change, but they need a little extra motivation. Good yeah. company is very important too, isn't it? Extremely. And the Prophet ﷺ said, al mar ala The um, every human being, their lifestyle is the same as their friends, right? So if you want to change, the first thing you have to do is try to change your friends. If you, and one of the thing, one of the amazing things is when you start to change, right? The the friends that you had before, the bad friends, they begin to kind of fade away. If you change for the worse, those good friends that you had, 
will start to fade away and you'll start to get you know those the, the, whatever group of friends like the old saying you know uh, uh, a bird of a fla- uh, uh, the birds of a feather flock, flock together, together yeah right and it's a very true statement mm-hmm. it's a very true statement and there was a story of a man for example who killed 99 people um, and when he killed 99 people he went to a monk and he told the monk you know uh, is there any possibility that I go to heaven and the monk said no you're going to hell yeah. and so he killed him too right and this was before the time of the prophet Muhammad so on and and so he then uh, goes to another guy and he says, is there any possibility that I go to heaven? I killed 100 people. I said, yeah, but you got to leave this place. This place is not a good place for you. Mm-hmm. So he just packs up and leaves. He didn't even pack up, he just walked. And on his way out, he, on his way to the next place where the guy advised him to go to, he died, right? But he left his friends behind. Him leaving shows that he was trying to leave it all behind. He was in so a state of repentance change. also. That, yes. that was being in a state of uh, mm-hmm. repentance. Yeah. Um, so that he can, he can change. The guy was telling him the truth. He couldn't have changed with that group of company that he had before. And even if he stayed there and tried to get rid of that group of company, guess what? They're still there. Yeah. They're still tugging on you. They're still pulling on you. Right? So if you, need, if you want to change, uh, eventually, the long, to make a long story short, this guy eventually went to heaven because he was trying to change. And he left that, that place. Not everybody can leave the place they are, that they're in. But the moment that you find that opportunity, if you're trying to change, the moment that you find that gap in, in that, that, that hole, in the, the light in that tunnel, the moment that there's this little hair length of an opportunity, you need to get out of it. Yes. Good Inshallah. company is very important. Mm-hmm. Lay down with uh, dogs, you're going to get fleas. Like you said, birds of a feather flock they together. Flock together. So you got to be around good company. Thank you very much. Barakallah, Fik. Nice being on here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. 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 And there you have it on the Dean Show, giving you some great advice. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and hashtag price. For those of you, you know, we're getting hip on all these social media tools, using it as a form to help deliver the message of peace, purpose. Islam, submission to the will of the Creator. And one of those that we have, like we said, look, we, we, um, we want to use the Twitter now and have you also, for those people who have it, hashtag priceless blessings. Let's talk priceless blessings. And we'll mention those right now because if we, one of those right now is, is, is and there's so many. I mean, if you were trying to enumerate all the blessings that the Creator has given you, uh, you, you couldn't do it. So one of those is, is great health. You know, when we have good health, that the Creator has given us, and Aaron Hernandez was blessed with that good health. I mean, how many people, how many athletes are out there like him who are able to, because of his gift of athleticism, he was able to, to almost achieve a great reward of $40 million. Imagine how much good he, he, could, he could have done with that. Now he's sitting in the jail cell. So maybe if we reflect more about the blessings that the Creator has given us, we ponder more of these many gifts that the Maker of Mankind has given us, it helps us to be a little more thankful. Because when someone gives you a dollar bill, you say thank you. hundred dollars buys you a meal, you say thank you. But the countless gifts that the Creator has given us, I mean, you, they're priceless. So let's talk about the priceless blessings. Hashtag, I'm sorry, hashtag at the Twitter. Go to at the Dean Show. Hashtag priceless. What do we say? Priceless blessings? Let's say priceless blessings. Is that what it is? Priceless blessings. And let's just see how many you can come up with. Just start list, listening. I'll tell you a few. Your eyes. Imagine if you can see the feeling of touch. You know, so many. We could just make a pro, so many programs of this. So go to the deanshow.com. Uh, From there, go to our Twitter page, hashtag priceless blessings at the Dean Show. And let's see how many, um, if we could stimulate some, some, some of your, your imagination and, you know, really start to think of all these great blessings to help us, mo- motivate us to be more thankful to the one who created us so we can be on a path of goodness and we can achieve that greatest prize, paradise at the end, on the day of judgment when the Creator brings us to account for everything we've done in this life because it's a test and we want to pass the test and avoid the hellfire. We'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be with you.